Jean Pavan of BlackRock joins us now. And Jean, I think you've asked a simple, but possibly the most important question right now. What comes next? What lies beyond this reopening, this powerful restart? Because we've had it. This is it. And we've had the market move. It started at the start of November. There was aggressive repricing of growth expectations in the first quarter of this year. That was captured in the bond market and real yields. And then we reset. What does come next, John? Great to uh, see you, John. Thanks for having me. Um, I think, yeah, the key question is, uh, I mean, no, we, the restart is real. It's powerful. Uh, we've been going through this now. And now we're starting to look beyond the restart. We've been starting for the last few weeks. Uh, market has been uh, focusing on this. And I think the reality is we're, we're grappling with uh, potentially unusually wide range of potential outcomes uh, looking beyond uh, the next few years. And um, I think what um, I think this is unusual. We haven't seen that, uh, you know, for the last 10, 15 years. I mean, people have been uh, contemplating maybe a roaring 20s type scenario where we have a breakout of growth. Uh, we've been thinking about inflation maybe getting out of control, and now we're back to, uh, you know, worries of disinflation. So this is unusually wide range. Uh, I don't think the data flow we've seen, like, confirms any of these scenario yet, but the market is primed to, uh, you know, see the data flow and uh, overreact one in one direction or the other. So I guess our advice in this environment is, like, uh, you know, take a step back, try to have a view a bit longer term, restart is real. We're probably going back to pre-COVID trend growth. Um, it's not a bad outcome. Uh, and uh, around that, uh, try to uh, fade the um, yeah, overreaction we're seeing on both sides. John, I'm going to pick up on that theme and bring in Phil Guarco from JP Morgan on that. Phil, the return to trend growth. And then it makes me ask the question about the shape of this cycle, because so many people are conditioned by what happened in the last decade. It was slow, steady, long, and a chart of the S&P 500 was bottom left to top right without much interruption. Is it any different this time around? Well, you know, I, I think when it comes to trend or growth, we're still thinking that, you know, it's going to go a little bit higher temporarily. I think, though, when it comes to the bond markets over the last 10 years, even the last 30, we've had lower lows and lower highs. Um, and, and I think maybe what we got late last week, earlier this week, was really a scare of that happening again. And even though I think we're set up for pretty good growth for a while now, uh, because in some ways all the money that's been given out is like a prepaid recovery. Uh, and I think we had some great news this week. Uh, we even saw at HAP Morgan in terms of, of credit card uh, growth, in terms of, of people using their credit cards. So I think we're good for a while. I, I, I just worry about 18 months, two years, down the road when the kind of party's over and does this debt load that we've taken on to get out of this crisis really affect trend growth going on the future? And you could call that uh, secular stagnation or, sure. or, or you, you could call it just debt loads, but it, it's going to be an issue. Well, Phil, here's the killer question from John Boivin. What happens next? And here's the answer. Here's the quote. We don't expect another decade-long bull market in stocks and bonds. John, just explain that to me, because you just said we go back to trend growth, and I think a lot of people might have heard that and thought, OK, we go back to what we had before. Slow, steady, long cycles, decent for risk assets. You don't expect that this time around. Yeah, no, thanks for an important clarification here. Uh, we might be going back to trend growth, uh, but what we're looking at ahead of us is if there's a lot of uh, range of outcome, but one that is not on the table, that clearly not on the table in our view is a repeat of the last 10 years. That's clearly not in the card. Uh, there are a couple of reasons. First, um, the, the, the policy response we've got over the last 18 months um, or, or about is, is at the scale that is a completely uh, of a different magnitude than what we've seen uh, in the GFC. So the, the, the policy impulse is very different. It's much more stronger on the back of a shock that ultimately on the economic side of it is, is a fraction of what the GFC, the global financial crisis, was. So um, we're saying, as a result of this, a very different dynamic. So we're not in a world where we're going to see, uh, you know, the, the weakest recovery on record, which was the, the last 10 years, uh, where inflation on the shot systematically expectations. I think we're, we're on the other side of this now. We're going to see maybe growth that is uh, solid but at potential. Uh, and then, um, you know, uh, stimulus that is going to continue to go through the system that's going to bring inflation to a slightly higher regime. Um, and in that environment, uh, difficult to see uh, both, uh, you know, bonds and equity going to a decade-long bull market. So uh, we don't expect that to happen. We think it's, uh, uh, you know, constructive for risk uh, for the next uh, couple of years. Uh, that's the new nominal team we have. 
uh, but it's not one where we'll see like 10 years of bull, uh, bull uh, outcome for both uh, equity and bonds. Phil Guanco, your reaction to that? Yeah, I, I, I would tend to agree, but, but I would re reiterate, you know, maybe thinking back to Reinhard Rogoff, who, who, you know, in their famous paper said that, you know, increased debt loads at the national level, especially at the government level, mean lower growth. I, I think that's misunderstood in some ways. It's not just the growth uh, in, in the national debt, uh, but, but it's really how that could limit policy actions in the future. So I, I think, as Mr. Baran was saying, you know, we've done, or the, or the government and the Fed has done what they needed to do, but each time we do this in massive ways, we wind up having a little bit fewer bullets for the next time. And if we have fewer bullets for the next time, and it seems as though these shocks seem to be accelerating, maybe the method we get out of the next one, because there's always going to be a next one, yep. you know, we're, we're not going to be as strong as we have been in the past. We're getting into cycle calls here. And, John, the call you're making that we don't expect another decade-long bull market in stocks and bonds, to your point, that's not going to be another issue for a couple of years. So I guess the question for me is today, if that's the cycle call, does it affect, is it relevant to the call I make today as a market participant? Does that affect my investment decisions right now? Or is it something to worry about further down the road? I, I think for now, I mean, uh, you know, and to the point that uh, my colleague was mentioning, yeah, Mr. Barco, uh, the debt level is a big part of the story. I think that's why uh, rates will not be able to go up uh, materially over the next few years. Uh, that's why it's an environment we're going to see inflation creeping up to some extent, but rate uh, remaining muted response. So real rate will be will be low. And for now, I think uh, it means uh, a pretty constructive environment for, for risk, something we've not really seen before. I mean, we're going to see some inflation coming through but that won't be detrimental to equities in, in our view for now. And so I think the big call for, for now is I guess probably expect like, you know, moderate, modest uh, return expectation in the five-year basis, but uh, in the front loaded and happening now. And I think uh, as a result, time to take risk is pro probably now.